Right, so this is an unboxing and no doubt review I never thought I was going to do. I'm sure some people have reviewed chess and unboxed chess. I personally never thought I was going to do it. But luckily, this isn't just your standard, regular, run-of-the-mill chess. This is fairy chess. It is different. So, you can marshal your forces from the traditional roster or entreat the aid of powerful new pieces like the Inquisitor, Thief and Jester. Employ your best tricks and tactics to win the day. But be warned, your opponent may make some gambits of their own. Since the 6th century, chess has been evolving. From India to Persia to Europe and the rest of the world, the game of kings has always changed with times. In Fairy Chess, the battle of wits begins before the first move. It includes all the pieces from the classic game, so you can just play it as chess, as well as a dozen new unique pieces with fresh, exciting abilities. Now, I don't know if you can see from there, but look at those. Those do not look like your regular run-of-the-mill rooks, bishops, horses, or well, other knights, and whatnot. These are different. So, let's crack this open. I'm actually really excited. I had no idea what this was when it arrived in the post. And in fact, it was put under someone else's car as a safe place. Thank you very much, Royal Mail. Really threw me. But it's here, undamaged, as long as I can get the cellophane off, which I'm struggling to. Give me a moment, use my teeth. There we go. Awesome sauce. And this is like a little binder? Oh, oh, little, oh it's, it's, it's stuck, it's stuck down, it's stuck down. Oh, what's this? What's that about? Can I get this off? I'm going to have to tear this. I don't want to tear it. Oh, I've torn it. Oh, that didn't feel good. Making a hash of this already, aren't I? Right. Oh, it's... Oh, you know what? Forgive me. Oh, I hate doing that. Such a nice little sleeve as well. I know it's only like paper, but hey. So, fairy chess or fairy chess or fairy chess. However you say fairy when it's got an E on it. Ooh, ah, okay. Two big baggies. Really, really full. And I like the fact there's little baggies. Because I know that these are for the... Is it going to be blue or black? Black player. And these are going to be for the tan or white or grey or whatever colour it is player. I'll open those in a second. We've got the... Ooh, box in a box. In the cellophane seal. Ah, it's a run of the... It's not run of the mill, my apologies. It's a crib sheet for your pieces. So that should make actually teaching chess a little easier, actually, as well, shouldn't it? Because if I just give whomever a brother my partner, and I know she's not a fan of chess, then I think it's just the idea that everything does something different, but she's, she's good with get board games, so, yeah. Um, uh, anyway, I've gone off on a rant. It's going to be a crib sheet of what each thing can do. Okay, then we've got something new. Right, so, pawn. Pawn moves one square vertically and cannot move backwards. On the first move, may advance two squares. Captures one square diagonally. Promotion when moved into an opponent's back row. The pawn may be traded for another piece. King excluded. En passant. Pawn may capture adjacent enemy pawn that has advanced two squares to avoid capture. En passant, I don't know what that is in French, I'm really sorry. Possibly passive ability. 1 of 1, 4 of 4, 6 of 6, 9 of 9, 12 of 12, 0 of 0. I don't know what that actually means. I'm not hip with the lingo. But I know what a pawn does. I know that a knight moves in an L shape, I know that a bishop moves diagonally, I know that a rook moves uh, orthogonally in as far as it wants, queen moves any direction as far as she wants, king can move any direction as far as he wants, one space, and there's something called castling, which I've never mastered. And then we have the peasant. Look at this fella. Moves one square diagonally, cannot move backwards on the first move, major hands two squares. So he is a pawn, but not diagonal, uh, not orthogonal, he is diagonal. Orthogonal means up, down, left, right, for those of you who don't know. I only learned recently, so I'm not being patronising here. We've got the soldier, who can move one square in any direction. We've got the herald, who can... Move two squares vertically. Oh, so he, he does like a jump. We have a tower. The Chamberlain, the thief. 
the Lancer. Oh my days, look at all these pieces. The Catapult, the Inquisitor, the Pontiff, the Courtesan, the Jester, the Regent, the Mercenary. And then there's the other player's um, explanation. But oh my days, how many have we got? What's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen new pieces. And just a quick glance at what they do. Jumps two squares diagonally. What is that? Jester, move any squares. Trickery cannot be captured or be captured. May only be may only replace the queen. Quarter song. Pontiff moves like he's gonna be moving like your DVD bit on your screen. Quiz oh wow. Jeez. I've just seen these numbers and I've just seen this sheet. And I'm assuming it's a costing in the sense that you can only spend so many. So E's worth one. Your horse is worth four, etc. etc. I'm actually blown away by how much variation there is in all these pieces. I'm not going to put these away actually because I'm just thinking I'm going to get the pieces out. But I might want to refer back to those. Let's crack out these ones. And of course they're in an extra baggie. And already I can see different bits. I've not even got the board out yet. I've been knocked back by all these new fandangled oddities. Right. Here's your little top hat peasant, man who's got flat head against the pawn. So you can actually as well see that they are. No, the camera's not going to focus, but you can see the difference. They look visually different, they're obvious to see, it's not like you're going to be sat on the board thinking what's what. And I believe he is quite reflective, oh I'm going to get rid of the standard ones, yeah. He's reflective of his card as well, so you're not going to be left in the lurch quickly flicking through. I know chess is a slow game, you take your time with it, but at the same time you don't want to be, oh, look at him! That's intimidating! You see him coming across the board towards you. Whoa. And this fella, look at him, looks a bit like um, a bit of an army helmet on him. Who's he? The soldier, okay, so that's, that's the quite thematic. Could have figured that one out real quick, couldn't I? Okay, you got your rook, your knight. Ooh, got a bit of a slant to him. Who's he? He's the herald. And that one, the big boys of the tower. The chamberlain with a circle in it. Oh, blimey. These are awesome. And I know I've been going on. Quality, it's your standard chess piece. Plastic, felt on the bottom so it's not going to mark the board. Not a grand amount of weight to it, there's no chance of it doing any damage, but there's also no chance of you doing any damage to these. The bags are a really nice touch as well, actually. I've not actually played with a chess set that's had a bag. It's always been a case of either the wooden one that folds over and you've got all the pieces just rambling inside, or you have all the pieces in a single bag, which is fine, but then you've got to divvy out who's got what separate and line them all up. Which actually makes the question, does the lineup of these new pieces matter? Are these going to be different? Chuck those to one side. We'll quickly open this one to see the variation. Now these have got brown felt bottoms, but again, I'll just quickly open it to check quality against. Oh, tight ziplock, and I pull out the king. Feels the exact same. Looks nice. Very cool. Awesome. Okay. My question there then, with all these amazing new pieces, does it actually need to be balanced? And of course, as I've just quickly referenced this, yes, it does. And it is changed to ensure that it is balanced because these have been put into ranks. You've got your rank ones, your rank twos, and your rank threes. So your rank ones is your pawn, your peasant, and your soldier. So you can have quite a fair few of those because they're not gonna have that much value. But 
it's recognised that the soldier is a little bit more powerful than the peasant, and the peasant's a little bit more powerful than the pawn because he can move diagonally and forwards, so he's going to be able to like skirt through other enemies. Your rank twos are your pieces with abilities that are beyond just the single move. So that's where your rook moving in straight lines, you've got your knight moving in L's, and then you've got your alternative pieces which are going to move differently again. We've already seen on the pictures one of them jumps over a peak, jumps over a square and lands on this one. So it actually does a double move. Probably can't take on the move it jumps over. And then your rank three, which is your queen, your king, your jester, which cannot be captured and can be swapped for a queen, and your regent. These have different values. The king's value is zero, which explains why it had a zero on the card, because you have to have a king. Your queen's rank is 12, sort of explains itself, it's such a powerful piece, moves around the board as much as it needs to. Herald and Inquisitor, 6 slash 0, I'll have to read the rules for that one because I'm not sure what the slash means, but there's the values you are allowed to use. So if you're a beginner, advise between 60 and 65, intermediate, 65 and 70, 70, 75 for advanced. And... You've got a nice little book that you can write in. I'm not always a fan of writing on things. I don't always like games that have finite resource, but... I'm sorry, I thought I was a stick of them. I don't always like games that have a finite resource, but, you know, it can't be honest. So, now we'll go into the rules. I normally do that first, but it was right at the bottom. Fairy chest, that's just a thing I've read you on the back. Nice little bit of story time. The anatomy of the card, explaining what it is. There's the rank, there's the point cost, there's the stalemate value, which is interesting. If you get a stalemate, oh, so there's no more draws. You're no longer tied. It's not a case of it's a stalemate, nobody can move. Oh, it's a tie. It's a stalemate, but who has got the most value? Very cool. Okay. I don't know if that's in regular chess. I'm not a big chess player. I know how to play. I never said I was very good at it. How to play, the explanation of certain things. It's not always, it's not going to be going into too much depth, I assume, but it has got the terminology on. So you've got turns, jumping versus moving. So if you jump, it's different to a move, as example. Check and checkmate, capturing and stalemate. And then the final page is a fairy chest, which is the different bits. Explaining that this has got a different value to this, because that's your stalemate value, as I've just learned. And then there's some examples of how you would set up so, all your rank 1s at the front, couple of rank 2s, rank 3, rank 3, couple of rank 2s. And variant stalemate. Sometimes, again, can have a stalemate. In this case, players can employ an, addition, an optional scoring method to determine the winner, as I've just said, so you don't have to have the, it's a draw, you can then move it on and say, well, it's not a draw because I've got six pawns by some miracle, none of them have died, you've managed to avoid them all, therefore I've got more value than you. Awesome. And the board. This is not the technical way to get it out of the box. But it is stuck. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, 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 here we go. Oh, oh. It's a boy! It's a board. It's a very standard looking board. There's nothing actually that special about it. I do like the marble effect that's going on on all of the white on the game. I don't know if you've seen it. It's definitely on the front of the board, on the box. A marble effect, looking very, very classy, very abstract. So you squint it, you might see some strange things if you've got some sort of um, weird dream thing going on. But yeah, awesome. I'm really impressed by this. I did not expect this many variant pieces. I was expecting... Five. I was expecting possibly six at most. You could swap out your rooks and your pawns, swap out your bishops, swap out your knight, and have a chamberlain, a thief, and a lancer. I wasn't expecting an inquisitor. I wasn't expecting a pontiff. I wasn't expecting a jester or a regent. I wasn't expecting the absolute unit. What is the tower? I'm knocked back. I'm blown away. I'm excited to play this. My brother-in-law is a massive fan of chess, so I'll definitely be bringing this one to go see him and saying, you know, let's crack this out because... I've never beat him at chess, so if I could get a bit of a scrub up on this, learn a bit, I might be able to get an advantage. Awesome. Nice little, nice little, nice, very ambitious, very lovely execution of a twist on what is a very well-known classic. Whether it plays the same is another matter. But I've rambled for long enough. Thank you ever so much for listening to all my excitement there. I will catch you next time.